If you've been dealing with chronic fatigue for a while, you probably know that it basically always goes hand in hand with specific nutrient deficiencies that need to be fixed before you can get better. The problem is that most of the advice out there is terrible and you need to look way deeper than iron, vitamin D or vitamin B12 to understand what's really going on and why you feel so tired all the time. So let me help you out and give you a list of the most common nutrient patterns that we see in people affected by chronic fatigue. I will go over very specific vitamins and minerals that your body needs to make energy, regulate your stress response and clear out the junk that blocks your mitochondria. Since many of these topics are rabbit holes in and of themselves, I will link related videos in the description. So you can click your way through all of these topics to understand them better. Let's get into it. So number one is magnesium and this should be fairly obvious. Magnesium is the most important mineral in your body. You need it for over 300 enzyme reactions, including the ones that make energy, relax your muscles and calm your nervous system. Here's something that most people don't know. The energy inside your cells, so ATP, isn't active until it binds to magnesium. So even if your mitochondria are pumping out ATP, you can't fully use it if you're magnesium deficient. That's a huge reason why low magnesium equals low energy. It's also a natural nervous system calmer and it blocks the action of adrenaline, acting almost like a natural beta blocker. Without enough magnesium, you're more likely to feel tense, anxious and stuck in the fight or flight mode. All of these will negatively affect your energy and wear you down over time. Unfortunately, only about 1% of your body's magnesium is found in your blood. So standard blood tests often miss a deficiency. I use hair testing to screen for it, but this is more controversial. In either case, if you suffer from chronic fatigue, definitely get on magnesium and understand its role in your body. A lot of people are walking around with a magnesium deficiency and don't even know it. The next deficiency we see a lot is actually in a group of nutrients, all of which are tied to adrenal function. So this would be sodium, potassium and vitamin C. As you probably know, your adrenals regulate your stress response and will pump out adrenaline and cortisol when you're stressed. That's why chronic stress can take a toll on the adrenals, which is often called adrenal fatigue. When this happens, you basically enter the burnout stage of stress where adrenal function decreases and the stress hormones that were once high now plummet. The problem is that your adrenal hormones, especially aldosterone, control how much sodium and potassium you retain. When adrenal output is low, you lose sodium too easily, which is why people with chronic fatigue often crave salt or feel dizzy when they stand up too quickly. Potassium can also drop or get imbalanced, which then makes energy problems even worse. Vitamin C is another big one here because your adrenal glands actually store some of the highest concentration of vitamin C in the body and they burn through it very fast under stress. If your vitamin C is low, your adrenals can't make stress hormones efficiently anymore, which then leaves you more exhausted. Now, I have to say that the whole topic of adrenal fatigue and adrenal support is also very controversial and a lot of practitioners call it nonsense. I go over whether adrenal fatigue is a fake condition in a different video that will also be linked in the description. All I can tell you is that optimizing your electrolytes, especially sodium and potassium, and strengthening your adrenal glands with vitamin C, for example, can be a game changer and definitely needs to be looked at. The third deficiency I want to talk about is a zinc deficiency coupled with copper overload, which go hand in hand. This was one of the most overlooked problems in chronic fatigue syndrome. Zinc and copper work in a tight balance. Zinc is needed for healthy immune function, wound healing and nervous system regulation. And it also helps keep copper in check. When copper builds up in your tissues, which can happen from things like copper pipes, copper IUDs, high copper diets or chronic stress, it stops being your friend and then starts turning into a neurotoxin. Excess unbound copper pushes dopamine towards adrenaline, which keeps you wired even when you're exhausted. It can also oxidize serotonin, which then leads to mood issues and potentially even depression. Stress makes this imbalance a lot worse by dumping the calming zinc and retaining more stimulating copper. Women are at a higher risk here because estrogen raises copper directly. Same with vegetarians who often follow a high copper, low zinc diet without realizing it. Now the fix here isn't just to take zinc because that will just push out all the excess copper from your tissues, which usually makes you crash. Instead, you have to be very careful, go slow and look at the whole copper detox process and what it needs to work correctly. Copper is definitely a very complex topic that I also go over in other videos in more detail. 
What you have to know for now is that without bringing your copper levels back into balance, much of the things in this video won't matter because you will always be overstimulated no matter how much you optimize your magnesium or electrolytes. That's how powerful it is. Fourth are deficiencies in the main nutrients for energy production and metabolism. So this would be mostly iodine and B vitamins. Let's first talk about iodine and your thyroid, which is like your body's thermostat. Your thyroid literally can't make thyroid hormones without it. The thyroid hormone T4 has four iodine molecules and the active form T3 has three. Low iodine means sluggish thyroid function, which then slows down your metabolism, digestion, and of course, energy levels. A lot of hypothyroid cases are really just a subclinical iodine deficiency since it isn't found in many foods, especially if you don't eat seafood. Of course, when you look at iodine, you always also need to look at selenium because it is selenium that converts T4 into T3. So without enough of it, you can have plenty of T4, but it won't be bioactive because it's not being converted. Then we have B vitamins. B1, B2, B3, B5, and B6 are all involved in turning food into energy inside your cells. These vitamins work together in a dozen of reactions that turn carbs, fats, and protein into ATP. So the usable energy that we talked about before when we talked about magnesium. When you're low in them, your whole energy production slows down and you can feel it as the classic, I'm running on fumes feeling. Stress burns through B vitamins very quickly, especially B5 and B6, and certain medications like birth control also deplete them. On top of that, gut issues can also impair your absorption, especially for vitamin B12. The only thing with B vitamins is that you want to be very careful when taking them in high doses. If your mitochondria are sluggish or your detox pathways are slow, Suddenly revving up your metabolism with high dose vitamin B supplements can feel like someone slammed on the gas before the engine was ready. This then leads to anxiety, heart palpitations, and again, this tired but wired crash. That's why I usually suggest starting with low to moderate doses to see how your body reacts. The same goes for iodine, by the way, because all of the energy nutrients will increase your metabolism, so too high of a dose can backfire and overstimulate you. In very severe cases of chronic fatigue, we need to calm the person down before we give any type of energy nutrient, even if he or she isn't doing much throughout the day. That's because the whole nervous system is just way too overstimulated and needs to be properly calmed down before we can do anything else. Mild cases of fatigue can usually take them right away, but again, listen to your body and if necessary, work with a qualified professional to help you set up a customized protocol. Great. Besides all these major deficiencies, there are a few secondary ones that can still make a big difference. So this would be things like vitamin D because it's technically more of a hormone than a vitamin and it's critical for immune health, bone health, and mood. Many people with chronic fatigue are low in it, especially if they live in a country that doesn't get a lot of sunlight. Low vitamin D can make it harder for your body to fight infections and also increases the risk of autoimmune issues. Because vitamin D supplements use up a lot of magnesium, you want to make sure to not overdose it in the beginning since you're probably already in magnesium in the first place. And then we have all the nutrients related to liver function. So your liver is your body's main elimination organ and chronic fatigue syndrome usually comes together with a sluggish liver that is no longer able to eliminate things like excess copper that we talked about before, but also other things like heavy metals, excess hormones, especially estrogen, and environmental toxins like plastics or forever chemicals. When these build up in your cells and tissue, they will also impact energy production, especially in your mitochondria. Even though each toxin takes a slightly different exit route, improving liver function is always part of it. So definitely look into this as well. Things like sulfur and sulfur amino acids, bile production and liver detox phases one, two, and three would be key words to research this. Liver detox can definitely take a while to fully understand but it can make a huge difference for your energy levels when you think about it long term. Okay, to summarize the most important learnings of this video, as a general rule of thumb, most chronic fatigue cases are depleted in calming minerals like magnesium and zinc while having too much stimulating copper. Once they're past the burnout stage, they also lack energy nutrients that help with adrenal function and thyroid function, as well as the B vitamins that support overall metabolism. On top of that, you also often have an excess of toxins that is building up in the tissue that also needs to come out. Depending on your background and how much you've researched this, it can definitely be a lot of new information to take in. So my approach is always to test first 
and then see what applies to your specific case. Once you have your results, you can then work on fixing your imbalances and target specific deficiencies. If you need a more detailed protocol that walks you through all of this step by step, make sure to check out my recovery program. It includes the exact protocol that I use to get my energy back, and it's a step by step system that includes diet, supplements, and all of the things that we talked about in this video. It will help you avoid the most common beginner mistakes that can set people back years. It's also linked in the description under my programs.